Hey guys, it's Josh. Welcome back to the Landlord Harassment Channel. Now, as you guys know, I sometimes talk about other subjects, subjects that are not related to my whole situation with my landlord. For example, I, I've talked about my weight loss journey a lot, and I've talked about some other subjects and things like that. Well, today I'm going to dive into something that I've do dove into before, but I'm going to go into it a little bit deeper today. Um, or tonight. It's almost 8.39 at night. And I'm going to dive into the subject of gangs, gang members in Des Moines and in, in the Des Moines area. Now, I stay in Ames, but every time I go into Des Moines, you know, I see, or almost every time I go into a Des Moines, I see a bunch of people um, perpetrating to be gang members. And so, I want to say a few things about this. Um, first of all, to the people of Des Moines, these people are not serious gang members. You don't have to take them seriously. You don't have to be afraid of them. They're goofs, really. I mean, and the reason I know that is because the gangs that they are claiming, most of them are Chicago-based gangs, like GDs, Vice Lords, Spanish Cobras, MLD, stuff like this. Um, and these are gangs that I grew up. I knew I knew a lot of guys in all these kind of gangs. But anything with like folks and people, Chicago-based, I knew a bunch of people like that. And the reason for that is because I'm from Milwaukee. I was never a gangbanger myself, but I'm from Milwaukee. And pretty much all those Chicago-based gangs, the folks and people gangs, have been in Milwaukee for a very long time, since before I was even born. So you're talking about like that since like the 1970s. Like, they developed in the 1950s in Chicago, but by the 1970s, they were already had branches in Milwaukee. So, Milwaukee is almost the second birthplace for a lot of this folks and people stuff. Um, so, I can tell you right off the bat that 99.9% that of these Des Moines kids are not serious. They're playing gangster. They're not for real. But every once in a while, they do something stupid. You know, they get themselves in, in trouble or they shoot someone just to prove they can or whatever the case might be. Um, and they get, you know, they make the news for that or whatever. So, but I want to talk to some of you guys who are claiming to be part of these gangs. You know, you got to take it from me. I'm from Milwaukee, okay? These these gangs have always been in Milwaukee for since I've been born. These gangs that you guys claim. And you're not part of it, so I don't understand why you're even trying to be part of it. What are you trying to even accomplish? You know, I the other day, like or like last week, I met another Iowa dude. Now, now, in this case, I ran into him online, right? And Because I commented on something I shouldn't have even been commenting on. But... He claims to be a member of the Spanish Cobras, and he, you know, he's from Iowa. And I knew just by the way he was talking that he just, he, he's not no Cobra. So he starts, for whatever reason, deciding to focus in on me and trying to clown in on me. And um, I wasn't going to make nothing of it, but I guess I was in a mood that night, so I was just like, okay. I asked him a couple of questions about the about the Spanish Cobras. And he did not know the answer. And I can't say I was shocked, but he's repping the diamond in his, you know, his profile picture and everything like that. And I mean like listen man, the question I asked him it wasn't no insider stuff. It wasn't none of this only only snakes would know this. If you have ever lived around Spanish Cobras at any point in your life ever, this is just basic knowledge. You know this just from being around Cobras. Just Even if you're their enemies, you know this just from being from the same city that some Spanish Cobras are from. So not only was this guy not a Cobra, but he's probably never even met a real Cobra in his whole life. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of game, okay? Like a lot of you youngins around Iowa claiming to be part of these gangs. I know a, a lot of white boys claiming GD. Okay. 
White boys cannot be GD. It's li it's in the literature that Ho that Larry Hoover himself created. You can't be a white boy and be GD. Now, there's some exceptions that sometimes happen. Exceptions are made sometimes. But it has to be a real special situation. White boy has to be from the hood, or he's got to have a black stepdad and he knows everybody in the hood. Or it's, it's it, there's some kind of special, unique situation where you can be a white GD and actually have black GDs accept you. Um, but as far as a, like all, the, all these white boys claiming GD and the, all these sets of GDs that are like 80% white, that ain't real. That ain't real. It's in their literature, and if there ever was any confusion about it, the blueprints killed all that confusion. And if you don't know what the blueprint is, you don't know anything about GD, so why are you claiming it anyway? And this is coming from a white boy. Was it the only, the most of the black gangs, actually all of them, as far as with, with the people and folk stuff, you know, the Chicago-based stuff, their books are closed to white boys, basically. All right, so you ain't going to see too many white GDs running around. You ain't going to see too many white stones running around, white MCs. Every once in a while, you'll see an occasional one that's from one of their projects or whatever. Be, but because he's from there, he's not looked at like a, a normal white boy. But for the most part, the only black gang that really has any anything like an open door policy towards white boys are the vice lords. And they probably have the most white boys of any black gang. All right, there's even a couple of all white vice lord sets, um, you know, in like in the southern suburbs of Chicago and stuff like that. But even the vice lords, even with the vice lords, there aren't that darn many white boy vice lords. There's enough of them where, like, if you if you meet one, you're not shocked to see one, right? You're not, like, freaking out, like, oh, my God, it's a white vice lord, right? Like you would if you saw a white GD or a white stone. Um, so there's enough of them where they're not, I guess you could say they're not really rare, but there's not that there are many of them, even in the vice lords either. But you you guys are claiming something that you can't even be part of. If you ever go to Chicago with that stuff, it it's going to be all bad for you. You know what I'm saying? If you ever even go to Rockford with that stuff, you don't even have to go to Chicago or Milwaukee. Just Rockford. Rockford isn't as dangerous as Milwaukee or Chicago, but they're serious in Rockford. And if you Iowa boys, Iowa white boys go out there, talk, you know, throwing up GD and talking about BD and, you know, whatever else you're talking about, talking about you're a stone. Nah, something bad's going to happen. No. A white boy can be a member of a lot of gangs. A white boy can join any Latino gang he wants to. You can be a but any anytime you see like a hardcore white boy gangbanger, he is all that he, that's for real. Who's not just some wannabe? He is almost always rocking with a Latino gang. A white boy who's serious, who's who's real, who's really hardcore, and he, he's about the streets. He's almost always going to be a Latin king, an MLD, an IG. A Spanish Cobra, something Latino, something Latino. All right, now there used to be white gangs, predominantly white gangs around for them to join too. Um, but a lot of them are gone. Like the Simon City Royals are gone, the Gaylords are gone. Those those guys have been gone for a while. There might be one or two sets left here and there, but they're basically gone. A white boy can join any Latino gang he wants to, though, as far as like the Chicago Milwaukee based gangs go. And there's plenty of hardcore white boy gangbangers in Chicago. A lot of them are with the MLDs. A lot of them are with the Latin Kings. A lot of them are with the Imperial Gangsters. Um, you know, with a couple of the other Latino gangs. So, but that don't make that mean you're one of them. You know what I'm saying? You can't just start saying you're an MLD or a Spanish Cobra because you read something online or whatever or... You know, the cops leak somebody's literature online, so now you think you know what you need to know to claim to be, you know, an IG or whatever it is you're claiming. It don't work like that, man. You're going to get to Chicago. You're not going to know what you're talking about, and it's going to be all bad for you. And the way a lot of you talk, all right, people are going to know you're fake. Like, if you ever go to Chicago or Milwaukee or Rockford or anything like that, people are going to know you're fake anyway. 
You're talking all this folks this, folks that, folks unity, all is one. That That's not real in the streets, man. I'm going to give you so, some more game because you guys don't even realize the basics here. That folks and people and folks stuff, that don't really matter in the streets. The only time that even really matters is, is behind the wall, in jail or in prison. It don't mean much of anything in the streets, really. Now, there's a lot more honor on the finball side than there is in the folk side. There's a lot more respect on the finball side than there is in the folk side. But even on the finball side, even with the five, like people are going to rep their, their own mob before any star. The Latin kings are going to rep their crown before they rep the five. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be the same with the lords and the stones and whoever else you want to uh, put into this mix. And with folks, I mean, it means nothing in the streets. Nothing with folks means anything in the streets. Nothing. That's just the reality of it. Um, folks kill other folks more than they kill, you know, finballs. By a landslide, and I mean, it's not even close. Nine times out of ten, a GD is going to kill another GD before he kills a lord. Nine times out of ten, a Spanish Cobra is going to kill an MLD before he kills a king. It's, it's the real deal. It's just what, what it is. But you guys, you know, you're running around the middle of Iowa claiming these gangs you know nothing about, talking this smack that just, if you ever talk that smack in a place that really has these gangs, you're going to get yourself hurt. And let me tell you something, too. False flaggers, man, Chicago, Milwaukee, even Rockford, Racine, where, wherever you've got these real gangs at, it's it's all bad for them. It's all bad for them, especially if, if you're going to false flag too. Never claim a finball mob. Never claim a people mob. Because I'll tell you right now, like them GDs and the folks gangs, MLDs and Spanish Cobras, if you're false flagging them, they'll they'll give it to you if they see you. But they're not necessarily going to go out of their way to find you, right? But them vice lords and them Latin kings, they'll drive five, six hours to, to handle business with you. I've personally seen them do it. Um, I could tell you stories about dudes false flagging, pretending to be vice lords in Green Bay and they weren't really lords. And some real lords from Milwaukee came up and oh, we won't even talk about what happened there. And there's another issue. People were claiming to be Latin kings on an Indian reservation. Some real Latin kings came up, drove up a good six hours to get to this Indian reservation, reservation and tore the natives up for claiming their stuff. Um, I won't get into all the details of that because it don't matter, but that's what happened. And if you're from like Milwaukee area, you know these like you know these stories. You know, especially if you were around in the late '90s, early 2000s, like I was. But my thing is this, guys. If you ever go somewhere that's real and you're claiming that stuff, the minute you open your mouth, people are going to know you're fake. And if you keep talking, you're going to get your head smashed. With that said, here's what I want to ask you Iowa kids. Okay? And this is coming from a guy who's from a city that's full of violence. Okay? I'm from Milwaukee. Milwaukee makes the top 10 most dangerous big cities list almost every year. And on the years it doesn't make it, it's just because the police have cooked the books to try to make it look safer than it really is. I'm from a city that's full of these gangs that you you guys in central Iowa are trying to claim, you kids in central Iowa are trying to claim. And my thing is why? Is it the bad boy thing? You can be a bad boy without being a gang member. There's plenty of rednecks who are bad boys, and Iowa is like more of a redneck state anyway. Why don't you just embrace that? That's more of who you really are. Because here's the thing. You guys are some straight wannabes. But it only takes a couple of generations of wannabes before some real gangsters start rising up, right? Like your first, second generation of wannabe gangsters is just wannabes. They talk about committing crimes but don't really do them. But then the next generation gets a little bit bolder. And then three or four generations down the line, you've got some serious gangsters on your hands. I mean, is that what, that's what happened in Racine. Racine started out as a wannabe city, but eventually they got serious. Like, why would you want to bring that to Des Moines? Des Moines is like the safest big city in America. Like, 
do you really want to turn Des Moines into another Milwaukee? Like, what, what do you have to gain from that? I don't get it, man. Because if you succeed in doing that, then everybody loses because Des Moines is another Milwaukee now. Is that what you really want? Like, do you really want to just, like, be careful, knowing you have to be careful walking around any kind of neighborhood you're in within a city and all that? That ain't what you want for Des Moines, is it? I'll tell you what, I miss a lot of things about Milwaukee, but that's one thing I do not miss. Just always having to just be 100% on alert when you're out walking around. And I'm still that way anyway, but I'm a lot more relaxed now because I know I'm a lot safer now. But still, is that really what you want to turn your city into? Think about what you're doing and think about what you're um, teaching like your little brothers and stuff to be doing. Because yeah, you guys are faking the funk, but what if your little brothers who are 8 and 9 and 10 years old now decide to take it a step up and get serious? Because they were looking up to you, not realizing that you were faking the funk anyway. You don't want that, man. That's all I got to really say. But here's how I'm going to leave this. I'm going to post some crime statistics from the Milwaukee Police Department that has to do with, uh, you know, the various violent... It's like crime statistics from the first, um, you know, five or six months of this year. Milwaukee has already had 500 shootings total. That means about 500 people have been shot already. Okay? Um, something like 200 carjackings. You know, I don't know, something like 1,000 armed robberies. Which, by the way, most of those are street robberies. Most of those are people just... Hopping out on people who are walking the streets or hopping out on people who are coming out of grocery stores or check cashing places or whatever. Or getting out of their cars or whatever. Bunch of carjackings. Um, something like two or three hundred carjackings. Look at them stats, man, and ask yourself if you want your city to turn into that. And if you do, then there's something wrong with you and you need psychological help. That's just being real with you. Just be from Iowa. That's what you are, right? You're, you're born and raised in Iowa. You don't know nothing about gangs, and that's okay. There's so many ways to be a bad boy and have some respect for yourself and have girls be attracted to you or whatever without claiming to be in a gang and without tr trying to attract that energy to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing this out of love, by the way. And I don't talk about this kind of stuff much. But in the years I've been in Iowa, I've seen this a lot, man. You guys are claiming some stuff you have no idea what it even really is. And um, you're either going to get yourself hurt or you're going to get the younger generation hurt. One, or you're going to get both of them hurt. So just think about that. Now here's your Milwaukee crime stats that I'm about to post right now. Think about this. Do you? I'm going to show you this too. Like it's there's like this YTD that stands for year to date, and it's this year to date as as opposed to the year before to date. You know what I'm saying? It says YTD on it. Look at those YTD stats. That means year to date, it may, which means from the beginning of this year up until about probably like two weeks ago. And looking up for 2023, 2022, 2021, whatever. And ask yourself if you want to be part of the energy that is trying to de turn Des Moines into, you know, places like Milwaukee or Chicago. If you want that, you're just a straight psycho. I don't know what else to say. But maybe this will wake some of you up. You're not gangsters. Stop acting like you're gangsters. That's it. See you later.